Now here we are with the Trevisa Lynx, or at least this is the uh, the Lynx 04. Uh, they do make um, several different variants of this. A lot of them are using uh, S35VN steel. This one in particular is not. It was a little bit more affordable. Well, we got 14C28N going on here. Man, this is just a ridiculously vicious looking um, worn cliff here. I suppose you could call it um, just a little bit modified because it does have a little bit of a uh, little bit of a curve instead of it being absolutely super straight. But yeah, this thing just comes down to an absolute needle. So uh, it can do some uh, pretty vicious things, but um, yeah, it doesn't exactly have uh, that much of a reinforced tip. So uh, I wouldn't really want to. Uh, you know, do some stupid things, opening paint cans or uh, things like that. Uh, I don't really think the tip is going to uh, last for that. But for a lot of detailed work, oh yeah, that is definitely fantastic there. Let's see, you get this uh, away and done up top. We got the, uh, the plunge grind ends there. So we don't have a huge amount uh, beforehand. Uh, that being said, I have reprofiled this, and, uh, well, I suppose in, uh, just the, uh, the absolute right light, you can see I have hit that plunge grind just a little tiny bit during that sharpening. So, uh, that will, uh, continue to happen. Uh, let's see, I think the, uh, the 14C28N versions, at least the ones that I've seen, have all been coated, but the, uh, the S35VN ones, uh, have not been. I don't know if that's just an aesthetic choice that they ended up going with, but uh, yeah, there we go. That, and I suppose it was kind of fun to uh, have this knife a little murdered out, if you will. But uh, yeah, we do have um, some black dyed micarta here. Uh, basically just a canvas micarta. It's uh, fairly smooth, uh, so there's not an incredible amount of texture going on there. That being said, it still does have those... Um, those fabric tendrils uh, that uh, will help you when it uh, gets just a little bit more moist than uh, normal. There you go. Moist. In case, you know, any of y'all don't like that word. <laughs> the, uh, the pocket clip on this guy, pretty darn good. We have two attachment uh, points here, and it's uh, inset into the micarta, so uh, good that we don't have just one attachment point there. Uh, we do have some um, button top screws on there. So uh, if you are wearing some uh, really, really thick uh, material pants, then uh, that might come in uh, a little bit to play. But for the most part, I haven't really run into uh, any problems with there. And uh, yeah, it's got a, a decent amount of uh, strength behind there. I don't really have a whole lot of a uh, wobble or uh, creaking sounding things going on there. We got just a little bit of a uh, an, an up curve here with a couple of jumps for uh, being able to bring that guy out. And uh, that works out great. We have a, a bit of a lock bar access there, so that's also nice. Uh, let's see. We do have, uh, at least on the uh, the show side, the, uh, the Pivot has their logo on there. And uh, if I remember right, it is a little bit different on the inside there. Uh, it doesn't have a little notch in the uh, the scale material to uh, keep it upright like uh, Civivis uh, end up doing. Uh, I do also appreciate that, um, at least on this one in particular, because this thing kind of curves around, I have the ability to um, just use my, uh, my index finger there. Um, just gives you uh, a little bit of uh, the friction to be able to uh, grab a hold of that and... Uh, Swing it out there. So that's a fun, different way to uh, open them up. Because of that, I suppose you can uh, also, um, yeah, you can spidey flick it. But for me, not quite as fun as just using that uh, kind of accuser style uh, <laughs> deployment. That's just really fun. I don't know. Uh, let's see. We have a, a 3.05 millimeter blade stock. I think that's basically that this is a three millimeter blade stock and then they coated it 
So I think that's where that extra 0 0.05 millimeter uh, is ending up coming from on this guy. Uh, we have a 3.6 inch blade. Uh, a lot of it is uh, fairly thin out there at the tip there. So, uh, you know, not a whole lot of uh, extra blade to uh, give you friction when you're trying to cut through a lot of stuff here. Uh, that would be 91 and a half millimeters uh, for the metrically inclined. Uh, and this is um, fairly interesting. This guy is a uh, 3.56 ounces or uh, 101 grams. So even though this is quite a large knife at 3.6 inches, it just barely squeaks by in that uh, under an ounce an inch mark that uh, a lot of people uh, end up worrying about. It still, you know, of course has that uh, heft to it. So, uh, you know, just the, uh, the crazy backpackers or something like that still probably wouldn't want to uh, carry this thing in particular. But if, you know, just those standard ounce and inch marks uh, are really something that interests you, then yeah, this is on the uh, larger end of the spectrum and uh, also meets that criteria. And the handles, we have uh, some contouring going on here. Actually, quite a bit of contouring. Um, whereas uh, the top portion of it here, um, we of course we have the uh, two facets going on on the top and the bottom. But this isn't flat up top here. It does have some uh, contouring as well. Really makes for a uh, pretty darn comfortable handle going on here. We have a dip down, but that's perfect for where my pinky wants to go. Really does make that comfortable. I can, of course, feel that pocket clip, but um, hey, it's a deep carry pocket clip. It's not my personal favorite on, uh, on knives in general, uh, and this one doesn't really uh, transcend that. But, um, yeah, I don't... It's not uh, egregious. I don't feel like it's uh, really digging in. I just uh, notice it. So, there you go. Yeah, this thing is ground quite nice and thin. This is um, this is a nice slicey knife, which is uh, it's pretty fantastic. Um, you know, Trevisa uh, doesn't have a, a huge amount of models uh, that have uh, come out so far, but um, this one has definitely impressed me because, uh, well, let's see, I think I got this from White Mountain Knives. I think it was 45 bucks. And uh, yeah, we got um, decent quality uh, micarta here. Oh, micarta backspacer instead of uh, just G10 for the backspacer. That's also kind of interesting there. And uh, 3.6 inches of uh, Sandvik 14C28N steel. Uh, that's a pretty damn good deal to me. That's uh, about the same kind of deal that you would end up getting on um, some of the more uh, budget Tucson's uh, back when they were um, uh, eBay auctions only. Yeah, just a, a lot of value going on there for, for the price. We got some nice jimping up top here. Basically right where I would want that. Um, I suppose, uh, I don't know. You could have some jimping up there if you wanted to, uh, do that, uh, pinch grip with the, uh, the index finger on there for some utility cuts. I don't really think it's necessary for it. Besides, um, if you are going to do that, um, with the clip being where it is, I feel very, very comfortable in just doing a, uh, a pinch grip and, uh, doing it like that. I feel like I'd have even more control over the blade that way. Let's see. Kind of lost my train of thought there. Wanted to uh, make sure that I didn't uh, forget anything in particular. Uh, about the only other thing that uh, I might have wanted uh, changed would be um, if I was able to uh, flip the clip over to the other side. That would basically require them to, um, you know, have that same channel on uh, that side that we would have over here and uh, a single other screw that uh, would easily be uh, easily be able to uh, be implemented without uh, any 
additional difficulties or anything like that. But that's about the only thing that I would personally change on it. This thing is just, um, well, it's a, a fairly decent uh, uh, design overall. Uh, I think it's uh, designed in-house, so they don't really have a, a designer attributed to it, at least not that I could find. Um, I'll be happy to uh, change that if uh, that does indeed uh, change over time, but eh, as it is now, I think it's an in-house design. Um, yeah, so this one's got the uh, the black micarta. Uh, they do have a few other variants of it. And of course, like I said, they do have um, some versions with an S35VN blade rather than uh, 14C28N. And the groins on those do look a little bit different. Looks like it might be a little bit more robust or something like that. Whereas this is, um, yeah, just uh, a, a little, it was the, the, the sleekest version of it. Uh, and the one that really interested me, especially for the price point of 45 bucks. So that's why I went ahead and uh, picked it up. And I am definitely not sorry. I, I really do love this knife. It's a, it's a lot of fun to play with. It's a lot of fun to cut with. Uh, they don't state uh, what kind of uh, coating the blade has on there. Um, but pretty much for the most part these days in the industry, if they're not mentioning it, and it's not, you know, just an absolute bottom of the barrel um, uh, cheap sort of thing, then uh, most likely it's PVD coated. You know, uh, definitely uh, Cerakote and uh, DLC coatings are uh, much more expensive to implement. You probably wouldn't find them on a uh, on a $45 blade. But that being said, the coating's done really, really well. doesn't really hurt uh, the action on it. We have uh, some uh, nice action. It's not... It's not drop shot, but it's uh you know it's a wiggle shot like uh most most knives end up being. Uh super easy to uh end up disengaging that. We have a, a fairly early detent as well. We don't have a detent ramp, but uh it's quite easy to uh get over that. And it's definitely over that by the time you are uh, going to uh close it. Um and yeah, we do have that flipper tab there that uh, you are over that by the time that it actually reaches you. So, yeah, they've done a lot of uh, good design work on this thing in particular. Yeah, quite nice. How about if we go ahead and uh, take a look on the inside of it? I don't remember it being supremely interested in, in on the inside, but uh, might as well do it anyway, huh? All right, so we got T6 hardware for uh, most of the, for yeah, just the uh, the standard hardware, and then a uh, T8 for the uh, the pivot here. It's industry standard. I of course always uh, love to see T8 hardware for um, the rest of the stuff, but uh, you know most of the knife companies haven't really caught up with that. Uh, yeah, here we are on uh, the underside of the micarta here. Uh, you can tell this is a, basically an end piece because it's uh, super shiny, which means it has just a little bit more of the uh, phenolic resin uh, on that side compared to uh, what they end up doing with the milling and sanding of it. If you've ever bought like a slab of micarta or something like that, if you were going to do uh, some handle uh, scales of your own or heck, I've even seen some people make like a, like shelves, uh, well, like wall mountable shelves and stuff like that out of them. But uh, that's kind of how that ends up being. And we have uh, ceramic bearings and brass cages going on here. Uh, they sit basically on the blade. We don't have uh, anything going uh, down deeper. And we have some uh, circular holes going on here for some uh, weight relieving. We have just a couple on the... Uh, lock bar side there but uh yeah it's all nice and balanced out and we do have a, a d-shaped pivot going on here on that side so you don't really have uh difficulties there and if i remember right this thing is keyed on both sides no it's not all right well i suppose you basically uh if you're putting it back together just want to uh make sure that you have the uh the logo facing uh, correctly. Not too difficult in general, but uh, yeah, it's a little, I guess, less foolproof than um, something like the Civivis that have that little notch out of uh, 
the uh, scale material there. But yeah, fairly um, standard on the inside. I do like to see uh, over here that uh, the back spacer is micarta as well, um, matching material rather than a G10 that uh, most companies end up doing for uh, for micarta scaled knives. So love to see that. There's wrist cam for it, in case you uh, haven't seen that for a while. But yeah, this is a really, really well executed knife. One that uh, I might be interested in uh, double dipping on and uh, trying to get a little bit more of the, uh, the upscaled versions with the S35VN. Well, I suppose it all depends on uh, if I remember uh, in time for it to uh, have still caught my interest before, you know, another slew of uh, knives end up coming out that uh, distracts me. Seems to happen. <laughs> More often than uh, I would probably like, but hey, what are you going to do? New shiny stuff is always interesting. And at least always interesting in... The very very short term moment before um, something that uh, you already know and love might have had a, a different variant or something like that that you might have uh, come across your way but uh, yeah I mean for 45 bucks this thing is uh, pretty fantastic um, I don't really have much bad to say about it other than I guess uh, I wouldn't have minded Having basically uh, this version uh, without a coated blade option. That doesn't seem to be the way that they went. But uh, of course, like I said earlier, if you do want an uncoated blade version, they do have them in S35VN, but they are um, they're a bit more than 45 bucks. So we'll, we'll just put it that way. I don't remember exactly how much, but uh, I think they were probably uh, 100 to 130, somewhere around there. I don't know. But of course, yeah, they're same shape, but uh, quite a bit different. You know, they're not using micarta and stuff like that for those ones. But still, yeah, if you're looking for a uh, an absolute monster of a uh, of a Warren Cliff blade that's uh, all sorts of modern and uh, comfortable and uh, fun to play around with as well, nice and comfy. Yeah, you really can't go wrong with it. But uh, all right. That's all I really have to say about it. So, as always, I appreciate y'all for watching. And have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, yo. Subscribe.